And it's local derby time again here at Abbey Stadium, Swindon Speedway for tonight. We present the second leg of the Midland Cup between the Swindon Robins and the Oxford Rebels. And of course, remembering that a couple of Thursdays ago, Swindon forced a draw up there at uh, Oxford, just along the road, of course, not too far away. And that means there's a lot of Oxford supporters here tonight, hoping to see the Oxford team at least pull off an identical draw, or of course a win here tonight will take them further in the Midland Cup. So it's all on tonight's meeting with the teams all square at 39 each, going through the lineup, starting with the visitors, the Oxford Rebels. At number one, their Norwegian signing through the winter, Doug Lovaz. At number two, Richard Greer, of course, featured in uh, some controversial decisions by the referee last week at Oxford, but Richard Greer is uh, riding there at number two tonight. At three, the skipper, Gordon Kennett. Number four is the uh, new Swede, originally intended for Kings Lynn, now with uh, the Oxford Rebels, Ricard Helson. At number, at number five, the Rebels still using rider replacement for Swede, Hassi Holmvist. And the two reserves, number six, Trevor Gear, after a very short term of office at Eastbourne last Sunday, now back with the Rebels. And at number seven, a very strong man there at number seven, John Jews. The programme number eight is Peter Burris, Brian Clark. And moving on to the Robins team, then one or two alterations here due to a shoulder injury sustained by Mike Keane at uh, Wimbledon on Thursday night in the Best Pairs Tournament. And Mike, in fact, is out for this evening's racing. Number one, of course, as always here at Swindon, England international winner of the 75 Super Armour, uh, the skipper of the Swindon Robins, Martin Ashby. At number two, his partner tonight, his brother, in fact, coming up in place of Jeff Bouchard, and that's David Ashby. At number three is Bob Kilby. At number four, not riding too well at the moment, obviously hoping to put it together tonight in this local derby, Norman Hunter. At number five is Jan Anderson on his own machinery tonight for the first time since coming into British League racing. And at two reserves, Bobby McNeil at number six, finally putting it together after some early season motor problems. And at number seven, dropping from number two, is Jeff Bouchard. So even Swindon looking a little stronger in reserve this evening. Tonight's referee is Mr A.E. Humphrey, and of course the team managers for Swindon, Dick Bradley, and for the Oxford Rebels, Roger Jones. Moving on to Heat 1 then, and we've got Marlon Ashby in red, and David Ashby in blue. In white, Doug Lovaz. In yellow and black, Richard Greer. Heat 1 then, Swindon Robbins versus Oxford Rebels, second leg, Midland Cup. Four riders then move up to the line for the start of Heat 1. Swindon going in against 1 and 3, so they must have won the toss because Marlon Ashby normally selects the inside gate positions. Going into 1, Marlon Ashby. In 2, Doug Lovaz. In 3, David Ashby. And out in four, Richard Greer. Four riders then lining up for the start of heat number one. Green light uh, goes on. And away they go, and it's Doug Lovaz who gets away. They're going to win Marlon Ashby on his inside, but it's Lovaz in a turn, and Richard Greer riding right round the outside of David Ashby. Outside the uh, mountain Ashby, but Ashby comes back on his inside, now challenging Lovaz. And as they go into the pit turn for the first time, it's Marlon Ashby who's gone into the lead. Lovaz second, Greer's got an engine failure. And that puts David Ashby back in the third place. Bit of bad luck there by Richard Greer. Round the top turn they come, Doug Lovaz still chasing Marlon Ashby down the back straight. These two riders now pulling away from David Ashby. And uh, poor Richard Greer's now pulled off onto the centre green. Bad luck there, an engine failure in the opening heat. On to lap three we go then, Marlon Ashby now extending his lead over Doug Lovaz second. Lovaz uh, riding around the white line there but not getting much joy. And in fact Ashby putting up, picking up far more grip on the outside of the track. Round that pit turn they come then, the yellow flag now in sight for Marlon Ashby. He's got about 30 yards now over Doug Lovaz second and uh, David Ashby, is, all he's got to do is stay on that machine for the odd point and that will put Swindon into the lead. Into the pit turn for the last time then it's Marlon Ashby's race, no doubt about that one. He races round now to take the checker flag, an easy winner by about 40 yards over second in white Doug Lovaz after a good early uh, lap challenge there in the first lap or so and third in blue was David Ashby. So that's a 4-2, heat advantage going to Swindon and they lead then after just one race. Time there for Martin Ashby, 70.8 seconds. That's a 4-2 then to Swindon. And that's the progressive scores. Overall, of course, the scores now Swindon 43 and Oxford 41. Moving on to Heat 2, Bobby McNeil in red, in blue, Jeff Bouchard. In white, Trevor Gear, and in yellow and black, John Jews. So these four riders come to the line then for Heat 2. Going in the gate one is Trevor Gear. Next to him in two, Bobby McNeil, ex-teammates at Eastbourne, these two. In three, John Jews. In four, Jeff Bouchard. Green light, not on yet. A lot of bikes are revving. They're on now. And away they go. And it's Bobby McNeil who gets away. But it's Trevor Gear on his inside. And John Jews into the turn. Jews first, Gear second. And Bobby McNeil third. And McNeil wanted to make an impression in this one against next uh, teammate down there at Eastbourne, Trevor Gear. But it's a going to be pit time for the first time. 
It's certainly John Jews and Trevor Gear looking strong here for the Rebels. Uh, Bobby McNeil now making a challenge as they go into the top turn, but it's John Jews who leads. Gear right in the inside line, and Bobby McNeil challenging now on the outside, but Trevor Gear comes out to meet the challenge and follows John Jews into the pit turn again. Bobby McNeil now turns it all on, round the boards, goes round the outside of Trevor Gear. Trevor Gear comes back on his inside, nothing separating the three leading riders, and in fact it's still John Jews who leads. And Trevor Gear locks up this time, McNeil goes into second place down the back straight. And Trevor Gear comes right under him again as they go into the pit turn, but McNeil's undaunted and races right round the outside of Gear back in a second place. We start the last lap. John Dew still leads him. Bobby McNeil second, and McNeil's gone very wide on the top turn, and Trevor Gear's come under him. McNeil recovers well there as he picks up grip on the outside. Heads back in the second place, but Trevor Gear comes under again as they go into the pit turn for the last time. Still John Dew who leads, and it's neck and neck between Bobby McNeil and Trevor Gear, but it's McNeil who gets there. And Gear third. Good race between those two. Obviously, uh, plenty of rivalry there between ex-teammates and Trevor Gear, the first rider there, to put his hand out for a handshake with Bobby McNeil. The winner in yellow, John Jews. Second in red, good ride, Bobby McNeil. Third in white, equally good ride, Trevor Gear. 4-2, favour the Rebels. It's all square again tonight at 6 each and overall at 45 each. And the time there for John Jews winning heat two, 73.4 seconds. On then two, heat three, and it certainly looks like this is going to be a cracking match here tonight uh, at Swindon. In red, we've got Jan Anderson equipped on his own machine tonight for the first time. In blue, Norman Hunter. In white, of course, it's rider replacement, so we'll see whether uh, Oxford team manager Tr Roger Jones elects to bring in Lovaz again or try one of his other riders, perhaps even John Dews. And in yellow and black, Ricard Helson. That's heat number three. And Roger Jones obviously feeling very confident here tonight because he decides straight away to bring in his number eight, Brian Clark. So Brian Clark rides in heat number three in the white helmet. Riders come to the line then, Swindon back in, gates one and three, we're waiting for Jan Anderson. Seems to be having a problem with his machine back there, uh, halfway down the straight before the starting gate. And he's now gone on two minutes, the other three riders waiting at the line. Jan Anderson trying to practice start there, does a wheelie and now joins the other three riders at the line. Jan Anderson in one, next to him in two, is Ricard Helson. In three we have uh, Norman Hunter and out in four Brian Clark. Four riders in line up for heat number three. Green light goes on. Hunter pushes the tapes, backs away. Hunter on the track spare in fact and Anderson for using but as they get away it's Ricard Helson and Jan Anderson and Anderson comes under Helson. Meanwhile Hunter goes right out to the balls and through comes the Brian Clark. So it's Jan Anderson, Brian Clark, Ricard Helson and Norman Hunter looking all astray there at the back as they come round the pit turn for the first time. And Helson going a bit wide there, Hunter trying to make an impression on that track spare, but it's Jan Anderson, as he did in his first meeting for the Robins here at Blunsdon, winning the first race of the night, that he competes in, and certainly he's looking a lot faster here on this uh, machinery, which of course is his own, he's brought it over from Sweden now, and looking a much more competent rider. On the lap three we go, he's got about 30 yards there over Brian Clark second, Rickard Helson third, and Norman Hunter making absolutely no impression at all at the back. In the pit turn goes Jan Anderson while Santa rides down the back straight and the riders now spreading out a little bit. It looks like an all squared race and certainly Clark proving his value there. And uh, if the Oxford supporters were wondering why Trevor Jones put Brian Clark into this race, Brian Clark himself now showing the fans just why he's here. In second place and as they go into the pit turn still Jan Anderson leads. They race around now to the checker flag and it's Jan Anderson the winner in red, second in white is Brian Clark and third in yellow, Rickard Helson and certainly a great confidence booster there to Jan Anderson winning his first race there on his own machine. So the points again shared, three each. Progressive scores tonight are Oxford 9 and Swindon 9 and overall it's Oxford 48, Swindon 48. And the winning time there for Jan Anderson, 73 seconds exactly, all squared at 9 each as we move on to Heat 4. In red we had Bob Kilby, in blue Bobby McNeil. In white, Oxford skipper Gordon Kennett, and in yellow and black, John Jews. And all four riders for heat number 13 on the two minute time allowance. Four riders then make their way to the line, Gordon Kennett and Bob Kilby of course having their first ride to the evening. Bob in fact who has featured recent weeks in this controversy over uh, a transfer fee from Oxford. And that obviously has added to the needle here tonight, but the four riders lining up with Gordon Kennett in one, Bob Kilby in two. John Jews in three and Bobby McNeil out in gate four. The green light then, not on yet, another rider's revving. Green light goes on late, but it's on now and away they go. And it's Bob Kilby who gets away with Gordon Kennedy on his inside. John Jews on the outside and Jews riding right round the outside of Kilby there. Kilby comes back to meet him, but Jews matches him down the back straight. 
and in fact the Kilby on the inside and Jews on the outside then nobody prepared to give an inch and again Jews rides around the outside as they come out of the fit turn it's John Jews in the lead good bit of riding by the uh, Oxford number seven Kilby second and he locks up there and almost under him is Golden get it and there's certainly plenty of needle out there tonight at the back Bobby McNeil in the lead pit turn they go and oh, God, Bob Kilby they're getting into all sorts of trouble on the pit turn Kennett unable to make the impression as we start lap number three still in the lead then John Jews again Kennett attempting to come under Bob Kilby but Jews has gone out to the boards and Bob Kilby closes the gap on him there as he goes down the back straight in the lead pit turn and Kilby now staying on the outside Kennett trying to come under him but Jews comes out wide and it's Kilby now challenging for the lead again as we go on to the last lap still John Jews who leads and again he goes out wide on a top turn he may have let it go too long this time and Kilby comes powering under him, but Jews it is who leads into the pit turn for the last time. And certainly Gordon Kennett now closing the gap on Kilby as well, so he race round on a checkered flag. But it's John Jews who wins in yellow, second in red, Bob Kilby. And third in white, fighting all the way there was Gordon Kennett. So a 4 2 heat advantage again going to the Rebels. They go into the lead, and the scores now Swindon 11, Oxford 13, and overall Swindon 50 and Oxford 52. And what a terrific match these riders are putting on tonight for a very large crowd here supporting equally, I think, both the Swindon Robins and the Oxford Rebels. So the time there for John Jews, a good ride from him, winning uh, heat number five, four in 72.6 seconds. That's two wins in two rides. We move on to heat five. Jan Anderson, Norman Hunter for Swindon, Doug Lovaz and Richard Greer for Oxford. And it's Swindon in gates one and three, Jan Anderson in one, Next to him in two, Doug Lovaz in three, Norman Hunter, and out in four is Richard Greer. Greer hoping that he's put his machine problems to rights. The four riders then line up, green light goes on, and away they go, and it's Jan Anderson who gets away from one, together with a rider in blue, Norman Hunter, but racing round the outside is Richard Greer, and he goes round Hunter, but Hunter comes back on his inside as he goes down the back straight, and Greer not giving anything away there, but Jan Anderson trying to get into it as well. Meanwhile, Greer races round the outside of Hunter, and a brilliant bit of riding there by Dickie Greer gets him into the lead, but Hunter comes back under him as they go into the top turn. Greer leans back again on the inside there, goes back round the outside of Norman Hunter, and Jan Anderson just about holding out Doug Lovaz. Lovaz surprisingly at the back, but what a race this one as they come round the pit turn, two races going on. Jan Anderson locked up, and Doug Lovaz goes into third place, they go into the top turn again. Not in between all four riders, but it's an Oxford advantage at the moment because Greer is leading, Hunter second, and Doug Lovaz third as they go into the pit turn. Hunter trying to get back into this one now, but he looks beaten there in second place. And if anything, as we start the last gap, it's Richard Greer who closes the gap on him. In the top turn, they go for the last time. Greer riding round the outside, flicks back to the inside as Hunter goes wide. But as he goes down the back straight, in the pit turn again, still in the lead there, Richard Greer. After his first race disappointment, he's coming round now to take the checker flag. The winner of heat five, second in blue, Norman Hunter, by a tile there over Dog Lovez, finishing very, very fast uh, and doing a wheelie at the same time. But it's another 4-2 there to the Rebels. And they increase their lead tonight, the score Swindon 13, Oxford 17, and overall Swindon 52, Oxford 56. And the time there for Richard Greer winning Heat 5, 72.8 seconds. They're four points in the lead now as we go on to Heat 6. And it's Marlon Ashby out to stem the tide for the Robins. He rides in red. In blue, David Ashby. In white, Gordon Kennett. And in yellow and black, Trevor Gear. Heat number 6. And as we go into Heat 6, the Rebels with advantage of the gate positions are in 1 and 3. From the inside, in number 1 is Gordon Kennett. Next to him in 2, Marlon Ashby in 3. Trevor Gear and out in four, David Ashby. Four riders just getting themselves organised on the line. A little bit of to and fro in there by uh, Trevor Gear and David Ashby. Both Kennett and Martin Ashby standing on the line waiting. Four riders there now. Green light goes on. And away they go. All four riders get away to get it. It's Martin Ashby who shows ahead of uh, Gordon Kennett. And Trevor Gear riding right round the balls there in third place. At the back, David Ashby as they go down the back straight. Certainly Marlon Ashby's going to take some beating tonight, but he needs some support from his team. And as they come round the pit turn now, Marlon Ashby pulling away his lead, showing to everybody here that he's still King of Blumston. Gordon Kennett racing on the inside there of Trevor Gear, gets himself the back in the second place there as they go down the back straight. Trevor Gear will be quite content, I think, with a paid second. And he's just got to hold out David Ashby as they come round the pit turn. Ashby not really near enough to come into contention in this race. On the lap three we go. The four riders uh, still fairly close together. Oh, Trevor Gear riding right out to the boards on that top turn. And David Ashby's now closed the gap on him. This is where eyes are focused now because this is where the race is taken up. Martin Ashby still leads. Gordon Kennett second. 
but Trebeguet is third place now in jeopardy as we start the last lap and Gear trying to hug the line here comes out a bit wide David Ashby's riding around the white line but Trebeguet seems to have the speed down the back straight in the pit turn for the last time and coming out again there Martin Ashby races across the checker flag the winner in red second in white Gordon Kennett and third in yellow Trevor Gear point shared three to Swindon and three to Oxford that's 16 to Swindon 20 to Oxford overall it's 55 to 59 Martin Ashby still definitely the fastest rider here tonight 71.4 seconds his attempt at heat number six heat seven Bob Kilby in red Bobby McNeil in blue in white rider replacement in yellow and black Ricard Helson be interesting to see what Roger Jones decides to do in this one he's already used his number eight Brian Clark and Brian in fact responded with a very fine second place so we'll have to see uh, just what Trevor uh, Roger has got in mind for this next one heat number seven and obviously Roger Jones wanted to press home his advantage because he takes no chances whatsoever in heat seven and brings in his number one Doug Lovaz to ride in white so the full lineup Bob Kilby Bobby McNeil Doug Lovaz Ricard Helson Four riders break their way to the line then, we're waiting for uh, Bobby McNeil and he seems to be having some motor problems, Bobby won't be wanting those of course, having had a couple of weeks where he had some diabolical luck and had to retire from the meeting on both occasions, he's now gone on the two minute klaxon, that's the rider in blue, Bobby McNeil. And Bobby McNeil now with less than, uh, well 30 seconds there and his machine's still not firing and it's Norman Hunter who brings out the machine to the aid there of Bobby McNeil. That is of course the Swindon track spare I think. And would you believe Norman Hunter's having trouble getting the track spare going? And the blue exclusion light's gone on. Bobby McNeil's been excluded. In fact, that machine, the track spare's still not firing yet. And the exclusion light comes on for Bobby McNeil. The other three riders, in fact, lining up. I don't know whether they think that's the uh, start light, but it is. And it's the blue exclusion light, and the tapes have gone up. Uh, Doug Lovaz has started, but of course it's a bit of a shambles there, in fact. But it's a blue exclusion light on for Bobby McNeil, who's been excluded. That means that Jeff Bouchard comes in and takes his place and we get a restart of heat number seven. So the two minute klaxon goes again this time for all four riders. And with Jeff Bouchard now taking the place of Bobby McNeil, the four riders coming to the line. Jeff Bouchard in the gate one, in two, Rickard Helson, in three, Bob Kilby, and out in four, Doug Lovaz. Four riders then lining up, finally, for the start of heat number seven. Blue sea, blue exclusion lights still on, but the green lights now on the way they go. And getting away there on the inside is the rider in yellow, Rickard Helson, and with him, Doug Lovaz, and Lovaz goes into the lead, Helson under him, and Kilby now racing down the outside of Helson, but Helson holds him on the straight. In the pit turn they go, Helson on the inside, Kilby on the outside, and Kilby manages to lean back there, gets himself in a second place, they complete lap one. In the top turn now, Bob Kilby taking up the chase there of Lovaz, but as I say that, under him comes Rickard Helson again, and Helson is definitely not finished in this one. In the pit turn they go, Lovaz leads, Kilby hanging on grimly there to second place, and uh, Helson locking right up coming out of the pit turn, that certainly helped Kilby's cause. And in fact Bouchard now uh, coming down very hard there on Helson as they go into that top turn, come out again. Down the back straight, it's a 4-2 advantage to the Rebels, in the pit turn they go, still in the lead there, Doug Lovaz. Heading for his first win of the night by the look of it in second place, Bob Kilby. That's how it is, we go on to the last lap. Bouchard now making his challenge of Rickard Helson as they go into the top turn. Helson again locks up, Bouchard goes to his outside. But in the race down the back straight now, it's still Lovaz who leads. Kilby second, Helson third. And Bouchard not making the impression expected. And as they race round to the checker flag, it's a win for Doug Lovaz in white. Second in red, Bob Kilby. And third in yellow, is Rickard Helson. Yet another 4-2 there going to the Oxford side. The scores now Swindon 18, Oxford 24, so it's tactical sub time for the Robins. And overall the scores are Swindon 57, Oxford 63. The time there for uh, Doug Lovaz winning heat 7, 72.4 seconds. Moving on to heat 8, David Ashby rides in red, Jeff Bouchard has two on the trolleys in blue, in white Richard Greer, and in yellow and black maximum man for the Oxford side, John Jews. And Dick Bradley decides to put all his eggs in one basket for he don't, number eight, and he comes out with a tactical change in both red and blue. So out comes uh, David Ashby, out comes uh, Jeff Bouchard, and in their place, Martin Ashby rides in red, and Jan Anderson in blue. On top of that, Swindon electing to go in the gates one and three, because they can choose their gate positions as well, being six points down. And Martin Ashby goes into one, next to him in two, John Jews. In three, Jan Anderson, and in four, Richard Greer. 
And away they go, and getting away there on the inside, it's John Jews, Martin Aspie matches him, Greer around the outside, but Jan Anderson comes under him, and under John Jews as well, brilliant bit of riding by Anderson, he's overall though by John Jews again, and now Anderson coming back under Jews, they go into the pit turn, it's left to him to fend for himself, Martin Aspie meanwhile coming round to complete the lap with about 20 yards over John Jews second, and Jan Anderson in third place, Richard Greer not making the impression at the moment at the back, down the back straight they go, so it's a 4-2 to the Robins at the moment, but Jan Anderson with it all to do now to try and beat John Jews. They come out of the pit turn, he slows right up there. And in fact, Richard Greer's not finished at the back either. Greer, of course, who won his last race. And he's going to try and get back amongst the points in this one. As they come out of the top turn, he comes hounding down on Jan Anderson. Anderson holds him out, though, as they go into the pit turn. Martin Ashby, meanwhile, away into the night. In second place there, John Jews. Jan Anderson looking round there to find out where... Uh, Richard Greer is trying everything to hold him out. John Jews easing up there on the top turn as well. And the back three riders are definitely bunching now as they go down the back straight for the last time. Into that pit turn and Jews hanging about there on that pit turn. Anderson tries to come under him. And Greer still trying to come under Anderson as well in a race to the line with nothing in it at all. It's a win in red for Martin Ashby. Second in yellow, John Jews. And third in blue, Jan Anderson. So at least Swindon Robbins there getting a 4-2. Heat advantage. Their first, in fact, since uh, heat one. And that makes the scores now. Swindon 22, Oxford 26, and overall Swindon 61, Oxford 65. Martin Ashby's winning time, 71.4 seconds, and John Jews has his first defeat of the night. Certainly no disgrace there from John, though, conceding to uh, Martin Ashby here at Swindon. Moving on to Heat 9, Jan Anderson with two on the trot. He rides in red. In blue, Norman Hunter. In white, Gordon Kennett. And in yellow and black, Trevor Gear. Heat number 9. On then with heat number nine, just four points in it now with Swindon getting their second heat win of the night back there in heat eight. From the inside in one, Jan Anderson, next to him in two, Gordon Kennett. In three on the tracks there again now I see Norman Hunter and out in four, Trevor Gear. Swindon of course looking for a 5-1 to square it up. Four riders line up, green light goes on and away they go and it's Norman Hunter and Jan Anderson who get away. And it's Hunter on the outside, Anderson on the inside, but as I say that, Gear riding right round the outside of his teammate Gordon Kennett. And he gets in the third place down the back straight, and it's Anderson's place that's looking in jeopardy. Hunter leads, they go into the pit turn, but Trevor Gear riding round the outside of Anderson. Anderson stays on the inside, holds him out with sheer speed down the straight. And as they go into the top turn now, all four riders pretty well bunched together there, but Anderson still holding out second place. Down the back straight they go, Hunter leads, Anderson second. And Trevor Gear doing what he can there for the Rebels in third place. Gordon Kennett trying to get back amongst it. But Gordon Kennett lying at the back at the moment. Now comes under his teammate Trevor Gear as they go into the top turn. Gear goes wide to give him plenty of room to make an impression if he can. Into the pit turn they go then. Norman Hunter still leads. Jan Anderson second. And now Gordon Kennett has taken up the challenge of uh, getting under that second place. On to the last that we know. And everybody asking can the Robins do it. But Gordon Kennett's really turning it on. Trying to get on the inside. Of Jan Anderson, but down the back straight, Jan Anderson takes a quick look and makes sure he knows just where he is. In the pit turn for the last time, Gordon Kennett turning there, right on there, and Anderson's locked up, and Kennett's gone into second place, and Anderson losing it there on the uh, run in. We're really locking up, coming out of the pit turn for the last time, and obviously Gordon Kennett doesn't need two opportunities like that, and uh, he goes straight round the outside of Jan Anderson in the second place. So for three and three quarter laps there, it looked like Swindon were going to get on par, and that would have left it at 27 each. But Gordon Kennett gets in there for the Rebels and leaves them two points in the lead. So it's a 4-2 then to the Rebels, uh, to Swindon. And the progressive scores now, Swindon 26, Oxford 28, just two points in it. Overall, the scores 65 to 67. Time there for Norman Hunter, winning Heat 9, 73 seconds, just two points in it as we go on to Heat 10. In red, Marlin Ashby, in blue, David Ashby. In white, it's Ryder replacement, and in yellow and black, Ricard Helson. And it does look, in fact, as if Bobby McNeil was coming out to take the place of David Ashby in this uh, Heat number 10. Certainly it seems to be him down there at the entrance to the pit, so it could be a change, could be uh, Bobby McNeil in blue for Heat 10. Four riders come to the line, then it is confirmed that Bobby McNeil rides in blue, and for rider replacement, it's in form number seven, John Jews, who rides in white. So from the inside, with uh, the Rebels in gates one and three, we've got Rickard Helson in one, Martin Ashby in two. In three, John Jews, and out in four, Bobby McNeil. So poor old John Jews got Martin Ashby twice in two races, 
Green light goes on. Four artists lined up there now. And away they go. It's John Jews that gets ahead of Martin Ashby. But Ashby quickly under him as they go into the pit turn. Bobby McNeil third. And Rickard Helson trying desperately to come under McNeil there. But down the back straight, it's advantage Robbins. In the lead pit turn they go. Still in the lead there is Martin Ashby followed by John Jews second. And Bobby McNeil desperately uh, trying to get into contention here. Nicely poised in third place. And trying to catch John Jews. Jews going very wide on the top turn. Martin Ashby, meanwhile, pulling away to what's going to be his fourth win of the night if he gets this one. And certainly it's going to take a good rider on either side to beat Martin Ashby in tonight's form. On to lap three we go. Ashby leads, Jews second, and Bobby McNeil third. All four riders fairly well spaced out here, so I think it's a safe bet that it looks like a 4-2 to the Robins, and that'll square it up this time. In the lead pit turn they go. A real ding-dong match here tonight. Martin Ashby still leading, Jews second, and Bobby McNeil third, taking a quick look behind him, and his third place looks pretty safe with Rickard Helson dropping wide away at the back. Down the back straight they go for the last time then. Probably the most spread out race we've seen tonight in this exciting encounter. Round the pit turn for the last time comes Martin Ashby, checker flag in sight, he wins in red. Second in white, John Jews, and third in blue, Bobby McNeil. So a 4-2, favour the Robins. That makes it 30 each on the night, and uh, let me see, 69 each overall. So we're really set now fair for three uh, scintillating heats of racing. Heats 11, 12 and 13 with both teams all square after 10 races. Martin Ashby's winning time of heat number 10, 72 seconds. So uh, 10 races then, 30 points each on the night, 69 each overall. And we move on to heat number 11.